video game remakes. Remakes, I would say, have become a pretty big deal in the gaming industry over the past five years. 40 is some of the best versions or just best games in general, and has become a point of discussion for many gamers, arguing for and against it. I've been thinking about it myself over the past few days after finishing the Silent Hill 2 remake, and I'm quite conflicted on the topic, despite the title of this video, because I can understand the frustrations and where people are coming from, but I can also see remakes as being a great thing, no matter what era or time of gaming that we're in, and today, I'd like to talk about why video game remakes are a good thing to have in a time where a lot of these companies are going back to their old IPs and titles instead of new ones. Let's get into it, shall we? The idea of this video came from Susie Hunter or The Sphere Hunter as her YouTube name, who's a well-known YouTuber for her great reviews and analysis on horror games. She tweeted this out on the 29th of September 2024, a week before Silent Hill 2 Remake launched in Early Access which I feel is important to note in case people try to spin this point or narrative on me. Just to let you know that I'm not playing Silent Hill 2 Remake. Don't expect any coverage of that game from me. I'm extremely disillusioned with remakes. I'm tired of these companies not having faith in their creatives to come up with fresh stories and ideas. I'm sick of the mindset of, well, if the remake does well, maybe we'll get new titles. Respectfully, you can hold that. I won't. Play Signalus and Alan Wake 2. I don't want to go into too much detail on the tweet as I'm not here to start a debate, but this was the thing that got me wanting to talk about remakes and I understand where she's coming from, considering that she's played these games many times in the past. She's been very diligent on the topic in her Resident Evil remake videos, where she further expresses companies being afraid to come up with new creative ideas and instead rely on their old, arguably best work to make the money and fund the newer titles. To be fair, we do have Silent Hill F in the works, no doubt being made with additional funds coming from the Silent Hill 2 remake since that game got announced a year ago, and a new Resident Evil game is also in the works, which is no doubt being funded from the RE4 remake. So what she's saying is sort of spot on. Video game remakes have to cater for two audiences. The older gamers who've played the original versions of these games and will want to experience them for a second time, effectively capitalizing on those people's nostalgia to make them feel welcome when they play through them again. The second audience being the new and younger gamers, who never got a chance to play the original and will want to experience them for the first time, with all of the modern standards. This can be hard to balance because while the newer audience won't notice the nooks and crannies, the older audience will, and if one thing is tarnished, it could sour the experience. But at the same time, if the younger audience or even both experience modern issues like bugs, glitches, performance, or maybe just a bad gameplay mechanic, it can be bad for everyone. I may as well use Silent Hill 2 as my example since I just recently finished it. The remake caters to the old audience by retaining the amazing story that was told in the original, with new cutscenes and character models as well as maintain the same feel and dreamlike vibes that the original created, with the famous fog and the labyrinthian style areas you go to throughout the game. As being one of the older audience, I appreciated this. The modern improvements and the amazing accessibility options to help tailor the experience to my own. The remake caters to the new audience by modernizing it and making it easier to play, as well as more tempting and interesting thanks to the game's graphics and look while also being told the same story that was told back in 2001 without having to watch video essays or imagining a full concept from scratch. Modernization is something that should be obvious with video game remakes, taking what was so good from the year it came out and bringing it to a new audience. I'll continue to use Silent Hill 2 as my reference, but I'd like to bring in Resident Evil 2 as well, as I still think that even after all the remakes thus far, this is by far the best one. Silent Hill 2 released back in 2001, and one of the key differences between the remake and the original is the fixed camera, which was a design choice due to technical limitations for the consoles at the time. It was also used to instill fear and discomfort, particularly during certain sections of the game where it'd be small and hard to move, like the encounters with Pyramid Head or the Abstract Daddy. Resident Evil 2 also used a fixed camera, but didn't have as many technical problems, given how compact and detailed Raccoon City was. 
not expanding to the outsides of the city, much like how Silent Hill expanded to the outsides and hiding those bits with the fog. Both of these games opted for a third person perspective to make the game feel right at home, with modern standards as fixed cameras were a thing of the past, and they work incredibly well to further immerse yourself into their own worlds, whilst keeping that fear and discomfort you got previously if you've played the originals. Other modernization improvements include graphics, which both games look absolutely amazing, especially RE2, five years after the fact. Controllers that provide both mouse and keyboard and controller support, having different controller schemes, the game's running great on modern hardware for its time and quality of life improvements. I say games running on modern hardware because we've seen what can happen if they run like us. I'm looking at you, GTA Trilogy. One major change that I loved with the Silent Hill 2 remake was the combat, where they decided to opt for a Callisto protocol approach to combat, giving James the ability to dodge attacks and have free-form movement, so to speak, when you're attacking. I love this because even though the stiff and standing still combat in the original was good for its time, it would have made the game less appealing to pick up and play, thus reducing the interest in Silent Hill 2 and instead becoming this niche game that you're either going to love or hate. Fixing the games is something worth mentioning too, as there are parts of the original game that have been talked about time and time again that people just don't like. This can be done in a few ways, such as removing the section entirely or redoing it to make it feel similar but different. The second way is usually how most developers go about it. A few examples that I can think of are the Krauser fight in RE4 and the turret section in Dead Space. In the original Dead Space, Isaac is assigned to take out these asteroids to help clear a path for the SOS beacon, and you have to use a turret to shoot these. The turret controls, however, were incredibly clunky and janky, so it was hard to shoot them, especially while they were moving, and infamously became one of the hardest sections in the game. Thankfully, the remake fixed this by making use of the new zero gravity system they implemented, and Isaac instead calibrates the turrets to shoot where he focuses making it incredibly easier to shoot the asteroid, especially on the controller. In Resident Evil 4, the Krauser fight is a bit of a slow starter, having to fight him multiple times whilst obtaining beast pieces in order to proceed through the levels, and it drags the fight out a lot longer than it should. In the remake, instead of picking these pieces up, you're more or less going through a linear path, dealing with obstacles, traps, and bullets going your way, in a way that's more enjoyable and keeps you on your toes. These are but a few examples I can think of which were noticeable fixes, but you'll only ever notice these if you've played the original. I just want to take the time before we continue on to say that if you're enjoying the video and learning more about video game remakes being the amazing games that they are, consider subscribing to the channel. I've been trying to approach variety for my gaming content instead of making the reviews that I typically make, so I'd appreciate any feedback, love, and support. Thank you. One of the most difficult parts of remaking a game is that you have to try and not tarnish or change too much of the original version. So much so that old players shouldn't be able to differentiate from the game's main premise and instead make them feel like they're back in the universe or better yet, belong. A great example of a bad remake is The Last of Us Part 1 for the PS5 and PC, which didn't do too much to add new content or story. It was viewed as a new gen remaster, rightfully so, and shouldn't be how to do a remake because at that point, it's more of a graphics update than anything else. Remakes should entice people to want to play the original games as well, even just watch something on it if it's hard to get their hands on to get a better understanding on what made the game so good in the first place. Some other things to consider are the look, the atmosphere, and the feel of it all, whether it's 1 to 1 or 1 to 0.5. Remake being the point 0.5, if you catch my drift. The introduction of Dead Space when compared to the original is one to one, having the crew members on board, docking outside the Ishimura, and the exterior being almost identical, just with those subtle graphics changes. You still get the same feeling of, oh my god, the Ishimura looks broken down, abandoned, and downright scary. And the crew feel that way too, as if something had gone terribly wrong with the ship. The only difference is Isaac talking, which the voice actor does a damn good job of portraying him, since one of the main objectives is to find his wife, Nicole, whom he really misses and hopes that she's okay. Silent Hill 2 opens up wonderfully as well, 
with the famous James looking in the mirror, walking out and looking over the lake of Silent Hill. It's captured beautifully and didn't stray too far away from the original scene. The entire story of Silent Hill 2 for that matter is well retained here too, which is one of the game's strengths and what contributes to being part of this game's spirit. Keeping a game one to one for the majority of the game is what you want, but sprinkle a bit more into the process, like unreleased or even new content, and it becomes something more. As with these remakes, part of the experience is retelling the story in a way that's fresh, but offers up new ways to play or pieces of content for players to explore. All the remakes I mentioned except for The Last of Us Part 1 add new content to help expand the story, the setting, and characters without necessarily imagining a new game or a sequel. Dead Space does this incredibly well by adding side missions, which detail certain experiences and give you more detail on certain things, such as Nicole's experiences with the Necromorphs and the creation of the Hunter Necromorph, Dr. Mercer's creation. You're not required to do this per se, but for people like me who've played the original, this is a welcoming addition and adds content on top of the game's main story. Silent Hill 2 goes out of the way to add more content by introducing new puzzles and giving players access to non-accessible areas, letting players take the town of Silent Hill just a bit more. I remember from the original that you were only ever in the fog for like an hour, so you didn't get time to take it all in, but saw myself taking my time in the remake, given that they pretty much opened the town up to you within the first few hours, on top of getting key items required for the jukebox puzzle. It's really good in the sense that I can get lost and enjoy that extra time before it's back to an interior area for the next few hours. It never hurts to add extra content, although sometimes it can lead to some criticism, like RE4, which the remake took a bit longer to do, which sucks given that the original game already took a long time to complete. Video game remakes have allowed me to experience games that I never got to play when I was younger for the first time. The Resident Evil remakes are how I became a Resident Evil fan and I've been a fan for the past 5 years, playing each of their games, both originals and remade versions, and every time I hear about a new Resident Evil remake, I'm oozing with happiness, ready and slowly waiting for it to drop. Even with those negatives of corporate greed and wanting to make money to help fund the newer titles, I think people should welcome remakes for what they are, not try to justify them being a cash grab or simply being the same game but with new changes. Much like how you treat a remaster. They bring in new players, add new things, and most of all, try not to reinvent the wheel with their already established stories, but rather expand upon them and get people interested in wanting to learn more. Remakes are great, they're here to stay, and quite frankly, I don't see the rate of these games in general stopping anytime soon. I'll happily take some old games and play them with that fresh modern look over the new stinkers we've been getting the past few years. And that's why video game remakes are a good thing. If you made it to the end of the video, thanks for watching. I'm open for discussion about this in the comments, so let me know what you think of video game remakes down below. Do you love them? Do you hate them? What's one thing you look for in a remake? I'll have more coming to you soon. Peace.